What's up? What's up? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between. You know how we do grab your vices. Let's chill and get straight to it. This is episode number, I believe, 29 of the Straightforward with Miss B podcast alongside um, with my guest co-host, Mr. A.G. What's up? What's going on today with everybody out there in this beautiful world of ours? Yes, I hope everybody's been having a wonderful, wonderful week so far um, since our last podcast. Um, I, the most important thing I think that's been on everybody's mind since we're talking about a wonderful week and we want to wish all the blessings to everybody. Uh, the damn lotto done hit a billion dollars. Uh, it was like $1.6 billion, right, ain't it? Uh, one point, it's about one point two or one point three right now. But by the time they draw again, it should be one point six. Ooh, child, that's a lot of money. Yes, sir. I, I need it. Shoot, I need it too. So I'm definitely gonna make sure I get out there and I play the numbers tomorrow. A lot of blessings I plan on doing if I get it. <laughs> a whole, whole lot of blessings. But for anybody, not just us, just for anybody who is blessed to win, um, you know, it during this time, you know, we say this somewhat of somewhat of a recession um, that we're entering. Um, people, you know, after pandemic and COVID, it was a lot of financial hardships for a lot of people. So this would definitely, for whoever is blessed to win, um, this would definitely be a blessing to them and their family and friends. Just make sure when you win, you get the hell out of Dodge. <laughs> Not go back to the hood and hang in the hood with everybody. No, sir. You most definitely cannot do that at all. I mean, it's it's crazy how they force you to, to basically, you know, reveal your identity. But if they... um. <clears throat> Shoot, if they had it to where you didn't have to release your name and be on the news and all of that, shoot, I'm, I'm going straight into hiding. I'm probably going to fly over to a country, just lay low. I, I'm going to, you know, I wouldn't immediately spend that money. i definitely sit on it for a minute, maybe a couple of months, six months, six to 12 months, figure out my plan. And, uh, yeah, that's, that would, that's what I would do. I know that's right because I'm spending some off the T.O. <laughs> oh, and you go ahead, y'all. I ain't got the city. I got money already, a little bit. So I ain't in no rush yeah. to spend it just but first, but my first what day. I'm, what I'm saying is what I'm doing now is not what I will be doing after I win the money. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Oh, this shit I'm doing now, like, that shit over with. Oh, god. We're going to officially retire. <laughs> 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 man i wonder what everybody else would do if they won the money if you come across this podcast and you're listening in definitely leave something well this thing don't really have comments but i guess you can leave a comment uh what would you do with the money you know or if you even go to our youtube uh, page and listen to this audio version which i do upload each week to the youtube at straightforward with miss b you can definitely um leave in the comments what you would do with the with a billion dollars. Officially retire. Yeah, officially retire for sure. You got down right. Um, thank you for everybody for tuning in. You know, who have may have watched the replay of our um Sunday group chat live on YouTube. Uh, we get into some crazy conversations <laughs> on that group chat live. <laughs> Y'all force me to talk about stuff. Like yes, you do, and you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to get out there and talk about it, bro. You're gonna have to elaborate. That's what that's what you do on podcasts. Even if it's, I mean, of course, you ain't got to talk about certain subjects that you might be against us, per se. You know oh, what I'm saying? Yeah. But at the same time, you know, you you're there to get to just have your own opinion, and yeah. So you have to elaborate more on, on topics. So I'm glad you are work, recognizing that for yourself so you would make that improvement. Oh, my God. Why? <laughs> <laughs> so, 
But <laughs> yeah, so we was talking about this past Sunday. If you hadn't checked out the YouTube live, um, we talked about Kim Burrell's um, crazy situation in the pool pit. Um, we talked about child labor. Um, we talked about um, swingers clubs and stuff like that, which I went back and I I actually had to, I did edit some stuff out of that part. <laughs> no, no, no. I it. Because I just wanted to edit. I'd be want to try to halfway protect other people, you know what I'm saying, that I know will probably go back and listen. So, yeah. I took the part, the story I told you about what happened at Trapeze. I took yeah. that. Yeah, I took that story out. Okay. Yeah. But everything else is left in there. Um, yeah. So definitely check it out. And every Sunday, you guys, just come to the YouTube page. We go live. You can turn on, hit the uh, bell notification so you can be notified when we actually go live. Um, as of right now, the time will be 9 p.m. on 9 p.m. Eastern on Sunday. So be sure to, uh, yeah, join us. Um, outside of that, how was your week quickly? Uh, it was my grandbaby's fifth birthday. So we went over to a roller skate party this weekend and, uh, mm -hmm. and celebrated her birthday with her. So that's, that's pretty much my weekend. Oh, what well, happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Tell her I said happy birthday. I sure will, my little pretty baby. I'm the alligator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She is a little cute. I think I did see a picture. Um, my mama had a dress, had a, a real nice dress. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Oh. So that's what I did. Mm-hmm. It rained a lot, so. Oh, okay. Um, so let's go ahead and start this podcast. First topic on our list: um, the World Health Organization, um, kind of released a official, um, I guess press release, um, in rebar. I mean, in um, in lieu of the monkeypox that's been kind of rapidly um rapidly spreading so i definitely wanted to bring that up and um just make sure that everybody um uh, stays safe out here um they in this um press release they kind of just um wanted to um alert the public um who may be gathering um in places where there may be large crowds even smaller crowds or venues and I think it, it definitely, I was kind of just scanning through it. It definitely has some um, great information I figured would be great to um, pass along. So um, basically it says that monkeypox associated risk um, during this current outbreak, um, bullet point one, in the context of the current monkeypox outbreak, um, cases have been primarily identified at this point among some gay, bisexual, and, and other men who have sex with men, including those who have reported recent sex with a new partner or even multiple partners. Um, bullet point two, key transmission routes include um, skin-to-skin contact, mouth-to-mouth -mouth contact, and mouth-to-skin contact during sexual activity. Um, transmission can also occur through skin-to-skin -skin contact that's not even related to a sexual um, activity or sexual practice. So meaning you can, without having sex, you can still be able to spread it skin to skin. Um, face to face contact, um, whether it's, uh, via respiratory droplets, meaning when somebody may be sneezing or coughing near you. Um, and you can also, um, they've also found that you can contract monkeypox from, um, contaminated surfaces or materials, um, so, of course, that would be, you know, maybe like um, tabletops, doorknobs, things of that nature. So um, it is still unclear if infected people who are infected with no symptoms, however, can transmit the monkeypox virus. They're still trying to figure that part out, um, making it important uh, for anyone attending, like I said, gatherings, whether they are large or small gatherings, 
um, to exert additional care. And that additional care for those who may um, want to know, um, it says, what you should do. Um, everyone should take steps to protect themselves from monkeypox. One, avoid close skin-to-skin -skin contact with people who have a rash that looks like monkeypox. Um, do not touch the rash or the scabs of a person with monkeypox. Two, do not kiss, hug, cuddle, or have sex with someone with monkeypox. Do not share eating utensils or cups with a person with monkeypox. Do not handle or touch the bedding, towels, or clothing of a person with monkeypox. Wash your hands often with soap and water or use an alcohol-based sand sanitizer um, at all times, basically. Um, anyone with a rash that looks like monkeypox, so even if you see those little pimples or something on someone that you may know, um, definitely, um, hopefully they would have went to their healthcare provider, to emergency room to figure out what it is. Um, but that person should definitely talk to their healthcare provider, um, even if they don't think they had contact with that person who they saw with monkeypox or some form of rash. Um, still basically talk to your doctor. A person who is sick with monkeypox um, who has it should stay isolated at home. Um, it doesn't give a time frame as to how long you should stay isolated, but definitely stay isolated. Um, if they have an active rash or other symptoms, that person should be in a separate room at all times or area from other family members and even their pets um, when they're in the home. Um, while in consultation with their health care provider, um, people at higher risk for infection may consider a vaccination um, with an available monkeypox vaccine, which in the news it seems to be extremely scarce. Um, so hopefully um, the medical, um, you know, medicine society, these big pharma companies need to come up quick with uh, more doses of the vaccine. Um, but people who may be at higher risk include, um, but are not limited to, of course, you know, what we previously just talked about. So what you think about this monkeypox thingy? I think it just, we need to be safe out here. And uh, when you saying um, skin to skin and man on same sex, is that just... Made me think about this old television series that's just known too far. <laughs> I don't want to take us off the topic, so I'm not going to say anything. But, mm -hmm. yeah, we just need to be safe out here, man, and, and be aware of the symptoms and, I guess, be looking for the symptoms. On the yeah, this seemed like, yeah, <laughs> that's what I was thinking, too. I'm like, it's not like how COVID kind of is in the air. You know what I mean? It's nothing that you can really kind of see, at least with monkeypox. You see somebody walking around, they may have little, you know, just strange bumps or, like I said, those little pimples or stuff like that on them. Yeah. You may want to say, okay, what is that? You know, what's that on you? <laughs> yeah, man. Open dialogue. Keep everything open out here. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. It's just sad. You think someone sent the monkey pops? Is that something that's been out? And just not coming back, or is that something that somebody could have put out here? Mm, you never know, I but I think the initial case, I believe, that was reported here in the U.S., I believe that person may have traveled from a different country, more than likely maybe somewhere in Africa, because, you know, oftentimes we do see, you know, these type of smallpox or monkeypox, you know, this type of stuff kind of, you know, originate now i don't want to i don't want to put that on africa but you know that's what i'm saying yeah. in this case in this case it's that's because you know in some of those african countries they not you know they they would no let me stay out of that conversation <laughs> i'm gonna say <laughs> i'm gonna say something i have my dad who is african me to call me like what the hell <laughs> that was so stereotypical of you to say that <laughs> but you guys know what i mean so basically that's your question I believe the initial case 
um, that person had traveled from somewhere else and they may have, of course, you know, been around or been in an area in which they contracted monkeypox. They, of course, flew back here to the U.S. and then from that point probably just started contaminating things or maybe people that was in close proximity and that's how it kind of got spread it on. Uh. And that's all it takes. How long is it? I mean, just say if it be on dough knobs and table, how long do it last? Or is it to the table or something get gun tied and wiped off? Um, well, um, with this press release that they did uh put out, um again, this monkeypox thing is still under investigation with them, so they're still doing tests, so they don't have all the answers at this point as to how long the germs or whatnot can live on, say, uh, plastic or metal or, you know, maybe wo even wooden surfaces. Um, yeah, they haven't got that detail in their findings yet, but this is just kind of like preliminary findings that they've seen based on the cases that have been reported. Um, and, you know, of course, a couple of weeks, the CDC and WHO, they will probably have more, more details to give to the public um, because, of course, what we necessarily don't want to happen is that, um, of course, it start coming outside of right now. They're kind of seeing it within the gay community, um, again, you know, amongst men. Um, but, however, we don't want it to necessarily start going to the heter heterosexual and affecting women and, you know, women and kids and stuff like that. So... I'm sure they're gonna um, most definitely keep you know keep the public updated on that. Mm. All right, so moving on from that, um, stay safe out there, people. I will be traveling for, to New York for my birthday, um, but but best believe I will have hand sanitizer on deck. My mask will be on deck, and I will be taking every every precaution <laughs> so I can, so I can stay free of any germs or illnesses all right so um i wanted to kind of get into a little bit of um inc crazy crime related i guess incidents that have happened that just kind of makes you wonder like what what you know what's going on um a 14 year old water boy well excuse me water boy um here in the city of atlanta um basically um was charged recently for assault because he punched a Atlanta police officer in the eye. Um, the story did not reveal as to maybe why, you know, why the police was maybe talking to the, the to the um, child in the first place. Um, but if anybody knows Atlanta, we do have an issue with these water boys who stand, you know, once you get off the exit or even near the highway, you know what I'm saying, on the street selling these waters. They are extremely, extremely um, aggressive. Um, I thank God that, you know, I don't necessarily work to, work to where I have to drive inside the city um, anymore um, because usually when I do see water boys or even see maybe homeless people, unless I'm feeling quite generous, more, more times than none, I keep my windows up and I just keep riding. I just ignore them. Um, but... Um, for some reason, these water boys for the past year or so, they've been definitely, um, aggressive. So, um, basically the officer has sustained a punch in the eye. Um, he was left with some type of cornea damage, um, and the kid, uh, was charged. Um, I saw a lot of people, um, on the internet and in comment sections, just kind of having 50, 50, as far as like their thought process around this, um, but what I want to know is, you know, why are these kids, okay, we know you out there hustling. That's great. We like we like to see that effort and that initiative that you're taking as a child to earn some money. You never know what type of environment they come from. They may not, you know, maybe not come from a rich, uh, well-to-do family, so they may be helping out their family or even helping out themselves, you know, while they're in high school or middle school and just trying to, you know, get their money up. But why are these kids so damn disrespectful? To these elders. Uh, no home training, you know, they just, that's like a legal hustle to them. And that's something I just say they ain't been taught. And it's basically all you can say. Or 
they even haven't been taught or they don't care mm -hmm. about the being disrespectful. Some of those kids think that stuff is funny. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They too silly. They do shit for a land. Mm -hmm. so basically, it, it could be either way. That's three things I just gave you. I said, they want to do it because they find it or they, they don't know that they're being disrespectful or they just don't care. Some some of those kids don't know that they're being disrespectful, I would say. Right. Some of the stuff they do. Mm-hmm. Because they be like, well, I didn't mean it because, you know, so stuff that you do, you don't, you do it meaning one thing, but somebody might take it another way. But Right. Or, Right. They treat it like selling a rock. When you sell a rock, you everybody run into the car. So mm -hmm. everybody run into the car to sell that water too. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, these parents out here, um, or even the households where these kids are coming from, um, may not necessarily have these parental figures in their household. Um, people, leaders in the community, maybe teachers, maybe principals. Um, I believe that some. I believe that maybe in in schools and stuff now, even starting at a, a at a young age, maybe I would say fifth sixth grade. I believe that schools should start implementing some type of human interaction type of class, because I think that a lot of kids do um, um, they miss out. They don't they don't really know know how to interact with people or interact with society, you know, or be maybe social, you know what I'm saying? They need to develop like some better social skills. And I think that outside of offering, you know, of course, um, math class, you know, your history, your science, your band, your PE classes, there needs to be an inclusion of some type of um, social human interaction base type of class so that these young kids can, you know, begin learning how to not only deal with, with others within their own community, um, teaching, you know, teaching them how to deal with others outside of community, teaching the class will teach them how to deal with people in authority um, roles like police, firemen, shit like that. I think that, yeah, I think that's what's missing. I think that would be a good way to kind of, um, you know, yeah, because help these kids out. You're right, because kids only going to do what they see. Mm -hmm. And if you stay in a ghetto household and everybody cussing and arguing and having a good time drinking and smoking, if that's all you seeing when you at home, how do you expect for a kid to act when he out? Right. Do you expect for them just to automatically act a way that they don't know nothing about? You know, that's that's not being fair to the kid. I ain't never seen nobody do that before. Right. You know what I'm saying? Everybody at my house, we cussing and smoking and hollering and screaming and slamming doors and mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying just it could be a good household but even in the best households yeah you might have a grandma she good as gold but she gonna cuss you out just to show it's, it's something <laughs> yeah 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 so it's crazy for us to think the kids gonna act a different way just because they're in public mm -hmm. yeah the yeah program that's... you talk about at school that introducing them to that that might be the only time that they learn something like that. Right. Had an opportunity to learn it. Right. So. Yeah. So I think that giving them that type of outlet um, and that type of, you know, just kind of educational type of course within the school, um, I think would be great because not every um, kid and their family that they come from, like I said, can afford certain things or afford to send them to other type of extracurricular activities. I know for me, um, you know, of course, I didn't grow up rich or anything like that. But one thing I do appreciate that my mom did was have me do other things. Like, I participated in band. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm -hmm. I was able to kind of, you know, like I said, learn to deal with other people in different types of environments through band. We would travel to other places in the band. Outside of that, um, outside of high school, um, I participated in Girl Scouts. I even traveled places I thought I'd never go, you know. Um, within the, even though I was traveling since I was a baby, um, because my family is Panamanian, um, I was traveling back and forth. And then, like I said, with the inclusion of the Girl Scouts, 
I was able to go to other types of places. Like we went to one year I spent a couple of weeks in Wyoming. Like that's literally like if you go out of Wyoming, it's nothing out there but tumbleweeds. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty type of place as far as like scenery and mountains type of scenery. But as far as like nightlife and just city vibes, you know, that I was used to, it was absolutely none of that. And then, like I said, I got to be around, like I said, people of other races and and just, you know, learn how to vibe with them and talk to them and, you know, learn what kind of what interests them and what we had in common. And, you know, so just being able to send your kids to stuff like that helps broaden their horizons and just you know, help them learn how to interact with other people. And, and you know, they don't they don't offer stuff like that nowadays. You know, the, I think these people, the adults, are being selfish. They taking all the money for. The, for well, the they still have Girl world. Scouts, some Boy Scouts. I don't think they got. They thought that Boy Scout had that big old scandal with the um, where they was raping the kids. Now, they, they still got home. Girl Scouts. I know that for a fact. I know they got the Girl Scouts. They probably don't never going to know about they got the cookies. Mm-hmm. But I'm talking about the Boy Scouts where you going camping and mm-hmm. going to Wyoming, like you said, with the Girl Scouts. That's the only time I ever went camping and right. fishing and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Is with when I was with the Boy Scouts. And I think you by you saying that, I just think stuff like that was offered more back when we was younger than it is now. Yeah. I think that, I think stuff like that is available for kids, but it's not on a worldwide public scale. Like Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts was something that everybody knew. Like the brand name was known, right? right? But there are plenty of organizations who have summer camps um, different types of summer camps. You have might have a summer camp for just maybe the obese kids. You might have some type of camp um, that you can send your child to for um, kids with disabilities. You might have, you know what I'm saying? So it's just a matter of those families or even schools or counselors and stuff like that just making that extra effort to find out and, you know, find out about these um, places and then, you know, seeing if there's a cost to attend and, and wanting to send their kids to those things. But they're there. I think they're they're okay, available for them to go to. I mean, it's just the people have to have to take initiative themselves to want to send them kid, you know, send their kids to those places. I think we need to have more of those though. They need to be more of them and they need to be ready available. And mm-hmm. you need to have that stuff up in the schools. Like they used to send a note home with the kids talking about all this stuff, you know? All the curricular school activities. Right. Yeah, so it just sounds like not only is the families themselves, the media family, the community, the schools, and everywhere else, the churches, it seems like we are not, as a whole, um, maybe not doing enough to just kind of, like you said, um, bring these um, these programs or summer camps and, you know, things like that to the forefront. Um, outside of basketball camp, outside of Little League you know, that's kind of all we really, I mean, I agree with you there. That's all that really be publicized and people know about. But it's so many other, like I said, it's stuff out there. It's not that it's lacking. There's a bunch of nonprofit organizations out there that offer these things. It's just that, you know, like I said, the communities, we're just not bringing it up enough to our kids to push them to go, you know, participate. Um, but moving on from that. Um, speaking of some other craziness dealing with a young person, um, where this person was actually a little bit, um, older, 30, maybe 32, I think her age was, um, but anyway, a 30 year old woman, um, a 30 year old woman was shot, um, after she attempted a mass shooting inside of the Dallas Love Field Airport. Um, the woman, um, had had, uh, previous, um, egregious crimes ranging from like bank robbery to assault. Um, you know, she had that on a rap sheet. Um, but each of those, um, incidents, she was let free because she did suffer from a mental, um, illness or disability. Um, so what I wanted to kind of, um, ask for when we think of these type of situations where this, this particular woman, um, like I said, was, officially diagnosed with having mental illness and she keeps, you know, she kept kind of getting away scot-free 
um, with her crimes. Um, at what point do you think, you know, she should be sentenced to like a mental? That I was wondering, like, why a judge never sentenced her to like a, a, a institution to serve her time in, rather than just putting her, you know, putting her in a jail or prison. They could have so, been to put her in an institution. I felt like it could have been some type of prevention prior to this Dallas um, airport incident. It could have been so prevented. Tell me, tell me this. What kind of facts do you know about her? Do you know anything about her family? Or that she came from a, a wealthy family? Or was she... I don't know um, all of that. They didn't put all of that in the news. Because, you know, those people, was, that's, they can get a good lawyer and none of that stuff never happens. You know, it depends if you got the money to get the lawyer, he can keep you from doing that. Uh, that's just like going to when they commit you to a a mental a mental institution. That's basically like going to prison. You missed my so, whole point. You didn't hear what I said. I know that part. I said I said I want I said I wonder that. why the judge never sentenced her to an institution. Because that is usually, I'm saying, because of her rap sheet, this her known history of doing various types of crimes. She's had a rap sheet, and I believe she that might have a good enough lawyer to keep her from going. I mean, yeah, I understand that part. I'm just talking about like just on a general level. Like, I'm wondering why, you know, she's never been sent to an institution. I mean, I understand her having a. I'm trying to think big beyond just the, her having a good attorney. I'm just trying to think of what in the judicial system, you know, allowed the these judges to continue to let her go free and not put her in an institution. I'm just thinking of how this airport incident could have been prevented if she was already locked up in an institution and serving time. Then you know the airport incident wouldn't have never happened. Okay, well, um, they just been letting us sleep through the cracks. So I, yeah, maybe the crimes that she committed with her rap sheet, maybe they wasn't as extreme as the one that she committed at the airport, you know. But she, you know, you got to look at the crimes that she been committing. They might have not been worthy. Mm-hmm. That might be how she slept through the crimes she committed. Yeah, wasn't worthy of that. Yeah. Yeah, and then they said the lady, um, <clears throat> this same lady, um, also told the, I guess she told law enforcement when they came and got her, you know, and shot her at the airport, she told them that she was the wife of Chris Brown, and they said that she, this isn't the first time, <laughs> this isn't the first time that she's committed a crime and stated that she was married to Chris Brown. <laughs> Chris got a one out here, ain't it? Chris got, shoot, it was some other crazy lady that used to be jumping over Chris Fence at his house on his, some kind of way. She used to be getting inside of his uh, his property. Um, yeah, he, he has some he has some very crazy psycho, you know, fans out there. Mm -hmm. They fans. love, I know I love me some Chris Brown, but I ain't, I'm definitely not going that far. <laughs> definitely not going that far. Um, but yeah, so I like to know from you guys, like, you know, for people who do suffer from, it's not like someone did a mass shooting and then it's, you know, after the fact, they call it a terrorist attack and they start looking into the mental and the psyche of the individual. This lady had a rap sheet and already was diagnosed for years to suffer from mental illness. So I would like to know or hear from you guys as well, um, kind of how do we feel about um, these cases where there's somewhat of a lack of um, serious punishment for individuals who suffer from mental, you know, from mental illness. I really would um, like to know how you, how you guys feel about that. All righty. Um, let's see here. So Nick Cannon, Nick Cannon ha is just had his eighth baby. Yay! Let's give him some applause. Nick, Child, please. <laughs> you stay bad. You stay up to bat. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> this damn Nick Cannon, man. So he had the eighth baby. 
by whomever the girl is. I didn't even bother. I think her name is Bri or Bree or something like that. It was a natural birth. They posted all these cute little pictures. Them sitting in the natural birth tub and uh, she got. I believe she has a YouTube video. Um, kind of you know just showing the whole process of her natural birth, but. Nick Cannon has a ninth baby on the way as well. At this point with Nick, I'm just like, how the kids going to feel when they see they got another brother or sister that's the same age they is or one year with a different parent, you know? I'm That's where I'm at with Nick, how the kids go feel when they get older and understand that their daddy got down with knocking everybody out. Right. It's like, I don't know, you hear about those incidents, you know, like our grandparents or great-grandparents who, you know, may have been Rolling Stones and had kids everywhere, but just to actually, in modern day and age, for us to see it happening, like... Try to do it. He's trying to do that. Right, he's he's doing it on purpose, which is, I mean, to each his own, but Nick Cannon, child, the day, just like Lil Duval said, he said that the day the baby mama started beefing, he said, "Just look." He said, "Look how uh, quickly Nick Cannon is gonna age. He gonna start aging, <laughs> aging quick as hell, looking tired as hell in the face when the baby mama started beefing." I said, "Yep, and don't let him pass away or nothing like that. God forbid. Who child? Look, the baby mamas ain't gonna start beefing because he got no money to pay that." Man, you know it don't matter. We done seen the richest we done seen the richest families, kids and shit be beefing after they pass away. After the matriarch or somebody passes away. They gon' beef. Oh, you talking about after he pass away? Yeah. Y'all, y'all killing nigga a lot of t- <laughs> yeah, a lot of times that's when they start getting into it. It'd be once somebody oh, yeah. pass away and they start dividing assets and all of that. Yeah, I, ain't, I ain't gonna kill Nick off. I'm not killing Nick off yet, so I ain't thinking that. <laughs> no, I ain't killing Nick off either. I said, you know, God forbid, we don't want that to happen. But I'm just thinking, thinking ahead, like, you know, if something do happen to the man. I just would hate to see, you know, I, I would hate to see these mamas going, going at it. And at this point, with the mama shit, they know what's going on. They know what. When they give it up to Nick, he ain't finna just be with, with you, with them. Yeah. So they yeah. know we just, half of them probably be trying, they be with it too, so. Yeah. I'm gonna have a baby by you. Right. <laughs> it's like, I'm, okay. I know I have a secure future. I know that Nick is gonna sign the dotted line on this uh, multi-million dollar insurance policy in the event that anything happens. I just want to make sure that my kids are well taken care of. And yes, I did want to have a baby with <laughs> right. Nick Cannon. <laughs> with it no strings attached. <laughs> not a surprise when I was pregnant. Oh my God. We, we didn't stop until I was pregnant. <laughs> right. <laughs> a mess. And then Nick Cannon too, he um somebody pulled up either an old video interview of him, but basically he said eighty percent of women deals with some type of physical he said some type of hygiene or older type of issue boy they are you talking about the females lit his ass up in the comments it was hilarious they were saying that how you gonna how you gonna make that statement um talking about 80 percent of women deal with bad hygiene when you sticking your <laughs> you sticking your penis in, in in and out of all these different women and you messing up their pH balance in their vagina. So of course if you gonna come across somebody that more than likely probably did have bad hygiene, it's because they sitting there, you know, messing with you with the dirty D. They let it they lit his yeah, I ass got, up. I got experience at this shit, I'm just telling you. <laughs> We don't want to hear the truth. Well, Nick Cannon, if you can't, that means 80% of the women that you've ever slept with, you basically saying they had bad hygiene. It was your start. Because that's the only way that you would, you would be able to make that type of bold statement. You had to sleep with them. So you think Mariah was in that? <laughs> right, that's what that's what somebody should have asked. <laughs> you 
That's so what, what you trying to say, Nick Mariah? Right. Carey. So you saying Mariah Carey, <laughs> Pooh Nanny Stank? Nigga, that, let me know now. I'm just trying to get this shit clear. You said it. See, yeah. See that that interview didn't ask the right question. Cause I I definitely would have followed up like so. That's what you saying. So so I probably wouldn't have named her name full out because I wouldn't want to get sued. So I'd be like, so you telling me, MC, who <laughs> you saying? You right. You still finna get sued. <laughs> right. And then I my other question would be, what do you consider a a good odor? I guess you know what I'm saying. Like, how do you? How do you know what's clean, or what does what do he consider to be clean? Just because a girl may have no odor, does not necessarily mean that she clean. Right, that's true. But an odor is, uh, you know, a, a smell that you don't want to. <laughs> but I'm saying it, that's that's based on that's subjective though, because yo, what's I'm saying that's subjective. You may Nigga, feel like. Look, you yeah. as a man may feel like, you know what I'm saying, you may have different senses or whatnot that you don't like, right? But you may have a, another man or, you know, a homeboy who might smell something and don't consider that as being stank. You see what I'm saying? No, that, that ain't the stank I'm talking about. But I don't know what I don't know what stank you're talking about. The one that stank and everybody knows it's stank. <laughs> oh God. Like what is that? That's what I'm saying. It still could be subjective. It still could be subjective, I think. But okay. that's me. Y'all don't be want to have no real, real grown. Y'all still be wanting to have these high school conversations when we, talk, when we talk about anatomy and sex and all of that. Everybody has different likes and interests and preferences and everything else. So your stank may not necessarily be my stank. Oh, you might like it. If I call it stank, don't mean you don't like it. That's what you're trying to say. Yeah, other every stank ain't stank to people. That's all I'm saying. Your stank I'm might not be the, the same stank. stank that, I'm talking about the stank that stank to everybody. Okay, so let's put it in. <laughs> let's put it in some type of perspective. Like you, you okay, walk like a the, fish smell, right? When a female may come on her, you know, come on her menstruation a period, however you want to call it, and they don't, you know, thoroughly clean themselves while they own it or whatever, or they may have some menstruation, they may get on some pants or panties or whatnot, they may soil, and they don't wash themselves or wash that clothing, um, then it will begin once you start, you know, maybe moving around and sweating and all type of stuff, it, it, it starts to protrude the smell. You you know what it is, right? So right. I, I think that you and I both can kind of agree that, you know, for us and maybe for a lot of other people, we would consider that type of smell to be stank. So listen, let me tell you something right now. I don't know nothing about, a woman's body, uh, you can educate me on stuff like that. So, because I'm not talking for a person that knows something like that, I don't know, right? So, okay, and you know, I don't, I don't have no problem with that. But well, letting you know, to me like I don't, you know, man, I don't know nothing about that, Never right? So, that was my whole that was my know. whole point of saying what you consider to be stank may not necessarily be stank to somebody else. That's all I was trying to get to. And I was just like, when you said that, I'm like, I, listen, I don't even know what you're talking about. Right. And then, so that's why I'm like, I'm wondering, what does Nick Cannon consider to be bad hygiene? You know what I'm saying? Like, is it maybe a basic, uh, maybe a sweaty smell? Like, she might have just left the gym. He don't like that. You know what I'm saying? That type of smell? Or do he? is he talking about, like, you know, like we just talk about, like the menstruation type of, and ain't bathe smell. Like, what what is the bad hygiene smell to him? <laughs> That's what I want to know. What does he consider <laughs> to be bad hygiene? But anyway, enough of enough of that. Nick Cannon. <sighs> the problem mm -hmm. is, the eighty percent of women you said got bad hygiene is eighty percent of women you done slept with, apparently. 
and out of those eight, and those eighty percent of women, and you done slept with them, you done been close done enough to them, right? She, he done been close enough to them to to figure out what they smell like, and if they smell bad, and I know you still hit that, then that's on you. And some of that eighty percent got to be some of them baby mamas. Oh, most definitely, most definitely, <laughs> most definitely. And then on top of that, Nick Cannon, another question is, <laughs> what you smell like? <laughs> what do you smell like? Just because you got money, that don't mean you got good hygiene, Nick Cannon. Say goddamn, I smell like goddamn money. Child, please, dirty dick, neat. Ah, that's a do day. That's the gonna name the podcast. Yeah, well, that's that is Nick Cannon do day. Dirty dick, neat. Dirty dick, neat. A miss. Anyway. But Nick Cannon, uh, <clears throat> if I was like 20 years younger, I probably would have a baby by you too. <laughs> 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 Just so me and the baby can be well taken care of. I, I don't need you to be my man. <laughs> oh, my God. So we had one last story, but I don't want to make this podcast too long. So I'm going to think we're going to, I'm going to say this uh, story for Sunday's live where we talk about the Brooklyn pastor um, who was robbed while on live and inside the church. I think that'll be great for us to discuss on this Sunday. Um, did you have anything, AG? Uh, not today, but I would just like to tell everybody thanks for listening to us and we hope y'all continue to listen and like the episode. Yes, definitely. Did you work on our jingle? Wingle, wingle. Oh, God. See, he, you know, he be talking all this stuff. Y'all, y'all heard him last week. He said he was going to work. I bet I had a jingle done. Okay. I got to go back to the studio. I ain't been to the studio in a minute. Uh, I tell you, <laughs> people just be talking so much. <laughs> they be putting up a good talk. I can sing you a song though. No, nah, I don't want no yeah, song. I, I want to hear if, I want to hear a final mix version of whatever you put together. Jingle bell. No. Jingle, <laughs> hey, hey, hell no. <laughs> anyway, let's start getting out of here, y'all. Anyway, so thank y'all for joining us. That's bye. All right. Say bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Don't forget to check us out at STR, the number eight FWD uh, with Miss B on all podcast streaming platforms. And follow us on social media at STR8 FWD MSB. Um, and follow us, and we would definitely follow you guys back. And um, any business inquiries um, in a minute, we're going to get back to, you know, seeing if anybody want to advertise as well. Um, if you do, hit me up at str8fwdmedia at gmail.com. And until next time.